Hello, welcome to Uganda, a land known for its natural beauty and warm hospitality. My name is Sufi Baitom. I live in Kampala, Uganda, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the things that Ugandans wish foreigners stroke tourists knew before coming to Uganda. Number one, do not assume that everyone is uh, a Muganda. Some of the mistakes that many foreigners do when they visit, uh, the first thing they learn is uh, to say maybe hello or simple things in Uganda. And uh, that is very nice to have an idea of how to greet people, to say thank you, some simple things like that. But uh, I want you to know that uh, Uganda is a diverse country. We have people from all over the world that are living here, both black and white, especially, okay, I'm talking about in Kampala, not in the villages. So when you arrive in the city, do not assume that everyone speaks Uganda. Uh, in Uganda, even if they are Ugandan, in Uganda we have 56 tribes and each tribe has a different language. Uh, for example, I'm from southwestern Uganda, I'm Chiga, so we speak Luchiga in, in my village. So I had to learn in Uganda when I came to live in Kampala. Uh, but not everyone is able to learn because it is difficult for many people. For us, we have some kind of simple, similar words that, that make it easy for us to learn very fast. But there are people who are from like, like northern Uganda, like is okay, from the totally different backgrounds that it is hard for them to learn Uganda or to understand. Some people may understand when they have lived here for long, but not everyone can. And also have many refugees from South Sudan, from uh, Congo, from many other countries that live here. And so do not assume that everyone speaks Uganda. Uh, most definitely, a lot of them can speak it, but do not assume to just say a sentence in Uganda and, and think that everyone understands what you're saying. Or if they reply you in English, don't think they are trying to be rude or something. Most people speak English here, those who cannot speak Uganda. So you should know that. Number two, modesty. Modesty is very, very important in Uganda. For example, if you are a, hum if you are a woman, you must wear clothes that are not above the knees. Okay, if you're going to be in the city, that's okay. People will wear whatever they like here in the city. But if you go outside of the city, you must wear decent clothing, like long skirts, long dresses, and no pants. Uh, in Kampala, you can wear whatever you want. But also, don't wear booty shorts. <laughs> booty shorts if you are a woman. And like uh, in other countries, I see... Uh, the ones I've seen uh, when I've traveled or the ones I see on TV or wherever, they wear booty shorts to go to the mall. That is totally not okay here. You must wear decently when you're going in public uh, to respect yourself and also to respect the community. Yeah, so please be decent. Uh, still on the modesty, uh, <laughs> there's this thing uh, like uh, a lot of white people sorry to say i'm going to be using some words that may be offensive that may sound racist but i do not intend to to do that i just don't have a better way to to say them so you will excuse me if i say something that may sound weird i don't know a better way to say it so white people in most cases <laughs> they are when you ask ugandans around here we know that white people around the we don't know if they do that in their countries also, but they wear dirty shoes. Please, wash your shoes. <laughs> wash your shoes, shower, shower every day. In Uganda, we shower every day because this country is hot. We, it is very warm, sunny always. So when you move around, you, you there is too much dust and you are sweating. And uh, you people, you, you fall in as you like to walk and walk distance. A long distance you don't use border borders or cars you i think you just like to see around so you walk a lot and you'll be sweating then you go home and you don't shower the next day you wear the same dirty clothes uh, or same shoes uh, here we, we are clean people yes our, our country is not very clean it is dusty but i think that's maybe why we are using to like uh, shower every day wear new clothing every day uh, change clothing, not new, change clothing the next day. You can't wear something you wore today and the next day. No, that is dirty. Put it there, wash it, and wear something else. And wear clean shoes, please. Eh, you people, those people be wearing 
very dirty shoes and like you can literally smell them. Uh, those that have come, they have misrepresented your countries. So we think that in your countries, for you people, you don't wash your shoes. Uh, that's not nice. Hmm. Number three, <laughs> if someone calls you fat, they are complimenting you. Here, talking about weight, uh, commenting about weight is normal. Unfortunately, it can be sometimes, but to a big extent, uh, many people here, if you are, what is the best way to say it, not to say fat? I don't know. But you understand what I mean. If you if you have weight, uh, a lot of weight, uh, they consider you like a uh, successful. For example, men with big with a big stomach or who are like big. <laughs> if you marry someone like that, they are like, oh my god, he has married. She has married a rich man. So uh, if you are, whether you're a woman or a man, having weight is like a sign of success, a sign of being well off. So if someone says, oh my God, you are fat, what are you eating these days? Like they are trying to compliment you to, to make you think that you are looking good. If someone says you are fat, they're like, oh my God, you look so good. So if someone says you are fat here, take it as a compliment. Say thank you. Yeah, that's what it means. And do not call someone skinny or thin. Uh, you better just shut up and say anything if you're going to call someone thin. Number four. Homosexuality is uh, prohibited here. If you are gay or identify as another gender, you better like not show it in public when you come here. Because uh, in Uganda, what is recognized are only two genders, male and female. So if you are the, uh, identify as these other things, I, okay, I don't know them very well, but you understand what I mean, the LGBT. Okay, that one. Uh, I don't have much knowledge about it, but you understand what I mean. So in order for you to, to, to be safe and enjoy yourself, do not, show, do not show that in public. For example, if you're a man and you wear, you wear dresses in your country, or you put on makeup and whatever, and wear women's hair when you're in your country. When you're in Uganda, you must leave that, and you behave like a man if you're here. Or if you're a lady, and then you, like, you are... You are the man, you are, okay, you, you are not that, the sexuality that people think you are. You must behave like a woman when you are here because it is illegal to be another sex other than what you were born in. So that you, you should to be safe or to, to respect the culture here and to also be respected by others. Do not, uh, do not identify as another sex while you are here. I don't make the rules. I just want to let you know that it is not safe to do that. It is illegal here. You cannot do that in, in Uganda. Then next, uh, Uganda is high on morals. So you must, there are certain things that are not accepted here. Uh, we have so high on morals. Certain things that you people do in your country are not accepted here. So just, just to respect yourself, respect the community, respect the people that you find here. Yeah. And then let's talk about dating in Uganda. So uh, in Uganda, you see like how, how you, you have the stage of like just dating for fun and to just have a good time or maybe get to know each other. That is not the way it is here in Uganda. Once you start dating someone, the end, the end goal is marriage. There is no dating for fun. Or... That has started to become a thing recently. Like uh, people who, who are like heartbroken or, you know, like they just want to use others and do that. But it is not a very common thing here. And anybody that does that is considered a prostitute in Uganda. So once you, if let's say, ask someone uh, to, to go on a date with you, <laughs> then that person is already like in their mind planning how they are going to be with you uh, for the rest of their lives because the, the, main, the main end goal for dating here is marriage. If you're, not getting, if you're not dating to marry the person, then you rather just leave them, do not even inter, interfere with them. The end goal is like we date with the purpose of getting married. Yeah. That is the way it is here in Uganda. Then uh, if you're a man, you pay all the bills. Women don't pay bills here. Uh, even if you're just her boyfriend, 
uh, you may not be paying her bills but you must uh, provide her like money for her hair nails makeup those simple simple things so uh, in other words once you have a girlfriend you like put her in your budget on the things that you pay every month she must be there because you have to provide for her is the way it is here in uganda men provide for women and women don't pay bills so except recently things have started to change because the, the economy is very bad and it is very hard to live on our one income so women work sometimes but still it is known that a man has to provide then a woman can come in and help where there is needed uh, but girlfriends do not pay bills a man must pay all her bills yeah do not attack me those are not my own things just i'm communicating how things are done here in uganda so if you're dating if you are a, a foreigner dating a ugandan girl and then you don't give her money or she asks you for like hair money do not think that she's a gold digger or trying to detoof you know she she expects you to be able to give her hair money without even her asking it is just the way it is here and uh, the men here know it they don't even wait to be asked uh, once you start dating her you give her hair money or go to go brunch with like, her friends or stuff like that and then uh, we are still on dating then when it comes to wedding uh wedding is for the entire community you cannot have a small wedding to have like only a uh, friends a few close friends and family no for us how how things are here everything <laughs> like uh, it is like how a child is raised by the entire community so let's say uh, now i get married the functions happen in my home where i grew up and all the people that have seen me grow up they all of them will be there they want to come and celebrate they celebrate each other they mourn with each other so you when you have a function like a wedding we are big on traditional weddings they are really really big so you have like more than 500 people between 500 to a thousand maybe depending on how big your family is so your your friends come your family members friends of your family members then the entire community in your village they all come and be there to celebrate you and uh, also they support you like they put wedding meetings so if you you need like uh, to buy more food to buy more uh, of refreshments stuff like that they contribute for you and then you make a big party and all of them are there to celebrate with you the same way when you lose someone the entire community both near and far all of them come to support you in the funeral when you you lose a loved one all of them will be there so even in celebrations all of them have to be there yeah it is just the way it is and also another thing to mention uh here we pay bride price the man must pay bride price uh when they are out when you find a woman you meet their family before you marry them and then you pay they ask you whatever they want uh in form of cows money uh things material things i don't know depending on the culture on the culture where the woman comes from we have 56 tribes as i mentioned before so so each uh each culture each tribe has different traditions but mostly most cultures uh ask for money and cows and cows are very very important they are not like trying to sell their daughter or something it is just a cultural norm uh Maybe I should talk about it one day. Some of the reasons why uh, they use bride price in Africa. It is not like they are selling their daughters. There are um, reasons deeper than that. And I think I'm going to do a video about that uh, so that you can understand more about why they use bride price in Africa. Those are some of the things I can remember for now. If you know some others that have not mentioned and you're here in Uganda or maybe you are fallen and you've been in Uganda and you saw that or experienced it put it in the comment section and uh help to like this video so that it can reach more people that need to understand this information before they arrive in uganda because it will help them and uh when you like it helps the video to go further and so that it can reach the people that need to know the information so please like and subscribe if you haven't yet let's continue that discussion in the comment section I love you. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.